Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Candace. Today we are going to do a one month update on how my no spend year is going, right? So I started this May 1st, it's officially June 1st, so it's been a whole month. I'm gonna talk to you guys about some updates on things like a microwave that I talked about in the video introducing this, mending, uh, some things that I find to make this easier for me to do that I probably would have had a harder time doing if my lifestyle wasn't already a certain way. We're just gonna talk about it. Just some updates, easy peasy video. First we're gonna pray, then we're gonna dive right in. God, thank you so much for giving us resources and blessings and just for taking care of us. Thank you for giving us creativity and ways to reuse things and renew things and fix things that we otherwise wouldn't have thought of, you know, on our own. Thank you for always being there for us. And I ask that you bless anybody who's listening to this video right now. In Jesus Christ's name. Okay. So we'll do the microwave update first, okay? So in the video where I talked about how I was gonna start the no spend year, I had mentioned that my microwave had broken down like a week prior or something like that. And I knew I was going into the no spend year and I chose not to replace the microwave and to try going without it for a whole year to see how it rolls. Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> like, I was only really using it to reheat leftovers and to warm up, like, heating pads. Um, like, you know, like those rice heating pads that you can use. Uh, and for this past month, I've been reheating all of my leftovers on the stove or in the oven, which hasn't been an issue at all. The heating pads I have not used <laughs> in the past month. Now, I do like to use those like in the winter time, like warm them up right before bed and then like tuck them under your covers by your feet when it's really cold in the winter time. But it is the warmer months where I am at right now, so I have not had a real use for them. So that's still something that'll be figuring that out in the works later on in the year once it gets cold again, you know. But for right now, I have no issue not having the microwave. Still haven't figured out how to warm those up, but that's an issue for later on, guys. <laughs> And then let's talk about mending, okay? I knew going into this year that some of my clothes and things were going to need to have some mending done, obviously. Um, you know, as you have clothes, they wear out or a button falls off and you have to put it back on or, you know, your socks wear out a certain way and you gotta fix them if you're going to, you know, be of that persuasion as opposed to just buying new ones, right? So I knew there were some things that were going to end up in the mending pile. I did not anticipate how quickly some of these things were going to end up in the mending pile. Um, between my actual wearing things thin and, you know, just having like random accidents like a button falls off, um, I also have cats. <laughs> and these cats have nails. And so them scratching things as cats do. It's just their way, you know. I have some things that have ended up in the mending pile much quicker than I anticipated them being there. A lot of my socks all decided to wear out in the same spot all at the same time. So I've got a bunch of socks in the mending pile right now, <laughs> along with a blanket that's normally on the top of my bed. And you know, cats, they jump up there, they wrestle, they just have fun, they try and get your toes that are under the blanket, you know, and so I had like a lot of scratch marks and things in this blanket. And instead of, you know, tossing it, which most people would at the state of its life that it's in, I've had this blanket, mind you, for 15 years now. So it has, it has been around for a while, okay? Like the edge seams were starting to wear a little thin, so I went around with like the sewing machine and surged to the edges to put them back together. <laughs> and then with the actual, all the scratch marks, I am taking some of my spare scrap fabrics and patchworking it. <laughs> we're gonna make it into a patchwork blanket, guys. And 
That way it can always be the top layer on my bed, and the more they scratch it, I just add more patches. It's, it's just how it's gonna roll. It actually looks kind of cute because it was a white blanket anyway that had like almost like quilted kind of stitching in it. So adding like different color fabrics on top is kind of looking cool so far. We'll see how that goes. Uh, another thing is getting creative, honestly, with the mending, okay? Because like before there were certain things, not clothing wise, but there were certain things that I was thinking about purchasing to kind of fix a mending problem, but now that I'm not going to purchase those things, I'm getting creative with how I'm going to mend it. So for instance, I have a couch <laughs> that I purchased maybe a year ago, right? My cats, you know, cats and couches, guys, they do have a cat tree that they are pretty well trained to keep their nails in the cat tree and not on the couch. But, you know, before they were fully trained, and even now, occasionally, they still mess with it. I have, you know, like, all these little scraggly <laughs> threads <laughs> that are coming out of some of the corners of my couch. And originally, I was just like, okay, well, I'll just eventually purchase a slipcover for it. Right? Out of sight, out of mind, no big deal. But now that I'm doing this no spend year, instead of, you know, keeping blankets on the couch all the time, I am... Uh, debating if I should go ahead and use just like some really thick thread and just like embroider some sort of floral design or leaves or something on it to tuck those threads back in and just make it look a little bit neater and a little bit better. We'll see how that goes. It's on the list of things to do. My mending pile is pretty big at the moment so it might be a month or two down the road before I even get to around to that. But it's in the works and it's something that I would not have thought to do before doing this no spend year because now I'm like okay how can I use up the things that I have I have a lot of thread right I have thread I have needles I can make it work you know and I wouldn't have thought to do that otherwise so it should be fun uh, one of the things that I have found in the whole mending thing for me specifically is you know, like back in the day, women used to just like sit around the fire at the end of the day, their fireplace, and that's when they would do the mending was in the evening. And I find honestly, that's really convenient. Like if I'm sitting down in the evening, I might be watching a show or something. And so I find that I feel better about watching the show if I also have mending in my hand. So I'm actually still being productive whilst relaxing <laughs> at the same time. Um, but I plan on doing that more, trying to do at least one or two pieces a night <laughs> just to get them out of my mending bucket because my mending bucket is overflowing at the moment. So yeah, I'm gonna need to do that. Uh, things that I have learned along the way, right? So I honestly thought that some things might be a little bit harder in doing like the no spend year, like not going to the thrift store and just looking around and stuff like that. But honestly, I find that the farther I get into this, and again, I'm only one month in, right? But the farther I get into this, the more content I honestly am with the things I have because now it's forcing me to be creative, right? It's forcing me to make new outfits with the clothes I already have, right? It's forcing me to, you know, try out different solutions of things without having to purchase new things, right? Um, I'm also going to be doing probably some home projects this summer while it's warm enough. You know, I have some leftover paint from last year, so I'll probably paint out a closet or two that need, desperately need some painting <laughs> and get that done. And it's just, it's helping me use up the stuff that I already have, right? And make uses and like think about uses for some of the other things that I have that I have not used yet, which is a good thing, right? The whole not eating out thing, of course, I think is probably the harder part of this equation, right? Because, um, you know, we use eating out as a social thing, and there are other people in my life who enjoy eating out, and like for them it's very much a like quality time spent being together, like, you know, a very enjoyable thing for them. <laughs> so that's one of those things where it's like, 
I'm towing the line on it, like going out maybe once a month just to really fill somebody else's tank. It's not necessarily for myself, right? Because personally, I don't really enjoy eating out that much. But for other people in my life, it's something that they really do enjoy. So for me to do that for them, maybe once a month, right? <laughs> is something that really just boosts their mood and is nice and like loving towards them. So I might do that. We'll see <laughs> how it goes. <laughs> um, something that I did anticipate before starting this year was that it wouldn't be as difficult for me because of lifestyle choices that I had started making, you know, like before ever deciding to go on the snow spend year. And I have found that I was correct in that. So for me, the past like 15 plus about 15 years, right? The past 15 years, I've been moving, slowly moving towards, you know, being more minimal, not like start quiet house with barely anything in it, kind of minimal, okay, but <laughs> getting rid of the excess of the things that I had in my life, Minimali minimizing my like beauty routine, if you want to call it that, even though I don't wear any makeup and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> minimizing my self-care items, you know, minimizing the things that I buy already. I was going for more reusable options as opposed to disposable ones, right? So like I use a safety razor with just refill blades as opposed to a disposable razor each month, reusable, you know, menstrual products, reusable, X, Y, Z, lots of stuff, right? So I already was used to not purchasing a bunch of random stuff, right? I was used to not going into certain sections of the store because I don't need anything out of that section of the store anyway, right? So, like, I stopped wearing makeup over a decade ago. <laughs> so I don't go into the makeup section of a store, right? I don't usually peruse through the beauty products in a store. Like, I, you know, have a specific routine with hair and stuff like that, so I don't need to, like, go and look through the shampoo and conditioner aisles and all of those things anyway. So I was used to not, you know, purchasing a bunch of random things, right? Most of the things that I get or that I use on my body, I was already purchasing for my kitchen, <laughs> right? So a lot of the things, like my toothpaste, I make it myself from things that I buy when grocery shopping, right? So I don't have to go and make specific purchases like for stuff like that. Now there are some things, of course, you know, that are basics that I'm still buying. Groceries, obviously, you know, dishwasher soap, <laughs> soap for doing the dishes just in general, laundry soap, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but overall, my purchases were not excessive to begin with, which helped in the transition, of course. I can't imagine, you know, being the kind of person that just, you know, was just, you know, going out and purchasing things every week, you know. And I'm not talking about just basic groceries, I'm talking about just random stuff. You see something, you like it, it's on sale, you buy it, you know. Um, for me, if I was still in that mindset, it would have been much harder for me to swap and do this no spend year. For me. Personally, again, other people have done, I've seen other people on YouTube do a no spend year to cure that mindset and it seemed to work for them. So, hey, to each their own. If you want to do it, I say go for it. It really does force you to get creative. You guys probably heard that, didn't you? That's my cats. <laughs> Kitten in a truffle. <laughs> As always, you know? <laughs> but um, having those reusable options really, you know, it's just nice because I don't really have to go to the store to buy certain things anyway. Now, of course, I'm only one month in. We'll see how this continues to go as things like all of my socks probably end up in the mending pile. <laughs> and we keep going, you know? Who knows if my socks ultimately bite the dust before this year is over. 
I will like pick up crocheting or something because I do have crochet needles and I've got yarn. <laughs> I'll crochet myself a pair of socks. I'll learn how to do it specifically and I'll show you guys the results if I do end up running out of socks before this is all over. <laughs> but other than that, I don't foresee there, foresee there being any particular issues with the snow spin year. It's going really well. I do like the creativity. It's making me think about different things that I can do with the stuff I already have and different ways to fix things without going out and buying new stuff, which is kind of fun to be creative in that way. And, you know, it's helping me use my resources, steward my resources well, which, you know, in the Bible, it talks about a lot of, you know, how to steward your resources well, to be, you know, a faithful servant to God in what he gives you, right? And the things that he gives you to use them well, whether that be time, money, talents, you know, resources, all of that, all the things that he's gifted us with, right, is for us to use and steward well. I think that's about it for this update, guys. We're one month in. I've got 11 months to go. I will give you guys another update in another month, and we'll see how it goes. Bye, guys.